lab number 21. In second section, we will focus our mobile development using our command line interface together with a text editor. And in our case, we will use the Atom text editor, which is like not the simplest one, but it's really powerful. So in, in the first lab, we will focus in on development of a simple application. We will develop the CNN news application that will grab uh, the news from RSS feed that is located on CNN website. So uh, in order to do a, a bit fancy app, we will use Ionic framework and we will start developing using Ionic command line interface. Uh, Ionic uh, framework is really, really powerful and uh, it's actually still new framework from the Drifty company. Uh, if you go to to the browser and navigate to Ionic framework page you will see the information about them and there are also getting started uh, materials on their page uh, how to get started so basically we just can create a simple project from one of the templates that they have either it will be blank it, either it will be tabs or side menu and in our case we will use side menu and this will create a simple application by downloading the template from their website and preparing using their command line interface all the required structure for our app then we will take this app and move it to mobile first platform so let's start first of all we will open the terminal and navigate inside our dev folder workspaces and we'll create a new Ionic project with their command line interface using the command Ionic start then the name of the app in our case it will be CNN and then IO which will represent Ionic and then the template name in our case it's side menu and press end. basically as I said it will download the template and prepare the project structure for us We don't need to create Ionic account, and basically that's all. So now we can navigate inside our uh, Ionic project folder. And as you can see, there is already some prepared structure for, for Ionic project. And what is most important for us is www folder, uh, which is our app actually, the web app. And basically, uh, we can already start and preview this app in a browser using uh, include the functionality in Ionic command line interface and basically this can be done with a command Ionic serve but there is a specific thing that you need to do first you need to specify which uh, IP address which interface uh, to use in our case we will use localhost for running live reload server and the second thing that you can notice is that in our particular environment, I mean in our operation system, there is a small bug with Chrome or Chromium uh, and this bug actually related to the browser opening links from terminal and you can overcome this bug uh, with two options. So either you, you can install Firefox and make it your default browser and then all links will be opening normally or you can ignore this bug and open the links just by, for example, holding the control and clicking on the links here that are provided, for example, for, for dev server. So just like this, you will see the app. Uh, in order to start Ionic Surf without opening the browser, you can, you can also use Ionic Surf minus B, which won't open the browser. So you can still feel the same and still uh, navigate manually to the links you need. Uh, so basically this is our app it's already working it contains some default functionality so just an example and based on this app we'll proceed with other further development uh, of cnn rss application and basically the, the first step that we will need to do is actually try to move this application that is built with ionic uh, to mobile first platform so this is what we will do right now 
So first of all, we will open the terminal once again, and uh, actually we will exit from uh, a live reload and go to the workspaces folder and create the mobile first uh, project. So we will do it uh, with MFP, uh, MFP create command, and we will use it in the following way. So MFP create. Um, and then we need to specify the name of our project. In our case, it will be CNN MFP for uh, the project name. So as you can see, our project has been created. So now we can go inside this folder and preview the structure. So as you can see, there is some default structure already prepared for you that contains the adapters folder, apps folder, binary folder, components, build properties, external server libraries, services, server, and basically we will discuss all that uh, a bit later when we will come to each of those uh, through our labs. And for now we will start with the creation of simple hybrid application, which means that this app will be running in WebView components, so actually in the browser, and that browser will be controlled uh, by the part of native code. This is the custom Cordova build. So quite the same as, as Ionic, but uh, of course with adding functionalities related to a server, of course with security, with management, integration, and all that stuff that our mobile first platform is famous for. So let's create our first application, and we will do it with a command MFP at hybrid for adding hybrid application, then the name of the application, and in our case let it be CNN RSS. So as you can see, the new hybrid app has been added and let's go inside apps folder and CNN RSS folder that was recently created and the structure that you have there now uh, actually describes the, the common behavior of uh, mobile first platform. So you have the application descriptor, the main file where all the application settings uh, that are generic are stated. You also have the build settings that will specify the way how you will build your app, for example, whether you need to use concatenation or minification of your files or something like that. And you have also common folder, which is our, in our case is, is really important right now. And basically the common folder actually is our uh, web part of the app. So if you will go inside, you will be able to see that there is an index.html file some CSS, some images and JavaScript files and basically if we will preview it in the browser it, it will already work so if, if you will just uh, type MFP build and deploy which can be done in single, in, in single command with MFP BD uh, this will uh, actually create the server if it's not exist and deploy the, our application after building it and uh, the thing, the trigger that you see now is related to Java home environment that must be set. Uh, you shouldn't see this issue, I mean this error, if you completed completely lab 1.5 with setting Java home. But uh, in case you're seeing this issue, so you will need to do the steps that are described below. If you don't have this issue, just ignore this setting Java home once again. And that can be set really simple way. So you just need to type export Java home and specify the location. In our case, it will be the following. So it's, it should be under user lib gvm. And then it usually depends. In our case, it's Java 7 Oracle uh, without the backslash. And basically, if uh, I just click enter, the Java Home will be set. I can test it with Echo, Java Home, and see that value is there. But to make it global and to make it visible uh, after restart, uh, it's better to also grab this piece of code, this export, and add it uh, into the file uh, that needs to be modified with uh, required permissions. So we open it with, with sudo and our text editor. 
leafpad and that file located under your home folder and named bash rc so just the same way as you modified the path in preparation labs in, in first section we will add at the bottom this export command for java home so just like this and basically right now we can repeat our mfp uh, bd which means built and deploy as you can see it's now starting so what it will do first of all it will build the common environment because now we are located inside the common folder and we license this common inside the common folder so for example if we will have the different environments and we will be running this common on the level up uh, it will build everything but if we will be in a specific environment folder it will build only what, where we are stated in um, then it tries to find the server and no server configuration specified because it's our first app and first time uh, first time we touched actually the command line interface so it will create a server for us automatically and this is the good news because actually the, the server is included in common line interface so you don't need to bother with installations uh, configuration of all of that by default you uh, already can start developing and after server startup it will initialize the mobile first console we used to call it mobile first platform operational console and basically it will deploy your application in the specific environment that will be deployed there uh, and you will have the console with an environment and within the app inside so uh, the easiest option to navigate to this console is to type mfp console but because you remember that our operation system does not follow in the links in the browser so we can do it manually by opening the local host with uh, port 180 and navigate into work light console uh, the username and the password by default are admin admin and when we are getting in we are now seeing that we have the environment created which is named uh, just the same way as our project cnn mfp and inside our environment actually we are having one application and this application is cnn rss that is what we just created uh, and if we will go inside you can see that we just have the common resources and not more than that so that common resources we actually can already preview and this is the con this is the thing that are located inside the index.html files so we have there are just hello mobile first uh, inside the body html so uh, basically now what we will need to do we will need to try to move the project that we had in ionic here uh, into mobile first platform so this is can be done in several ways but the easiest one is just to do the following to do the copying of all files recursively that we have uh, under our uh, cnn io project so let's let's navigate there so home ibm dev workspaces cnn io and then www folder so all our web files uh, we will move just here to uh, our common folder recursively let's let's make like this so everything that will be inside the cnn www let's see what what we have now so uh, as you can see now we have uh, a bit more files so we have the index html images js slips templates so it's a bit more that we had previously with just uh, mobile first platform and basically now we will need to uh, start the modification of our app we will need to adopt it a bit and basically first of all i think for most of you it will be easier to do it with uh, some kind of graphical interface instead of console uh, we will go to that folder i mean apps cnn rss and then common and we will move uh, the images folder away so we don't need it uh, anyway i mean image folder uh, we just can move it to trash pane because 
actually that one contains only the icon from uh, Ionic which is not needed so JS folder is what we really needed and here we have the app.js and controllers that are related to our app from Ionic framework and we have three files that are related uh, to our app from the mobile first platform so init main and main and messages and basically the index file uh, has been overwritten uh, and as you can see it's now contain only the ionic part so it doesn't contain anything from mobile first and we will need to modify that uh, and basically in order to do it in in more easier way we will use the text editor which is already installed it's called atom it's not the regular text editor it's a bit advanced and this is good because uh, this will show us how to work with mobile first platform command line interface with, with custom text editor and basically we will open here the whole folder with our project inside workspaces CNN MFP so just like this and then we will modify the common part of our app and first of all we will add the required things related to mobile first platform so uh, you remember that we had three files inside the GS so init options main and messages and we do need to include them and the easiest option to include them is just inside the index.html and they should be included just before the closing of, of the body elements so just like this and we should repeat the same for other two so it will be main and messages uh, we don't need Cordova.js because uh, within the Ionic framework when we're just starting our app the um, Cordova or XPhoneGap will be initialized by the Ionic framework and in our case it will it, it will it will be the part of the job for mobile first platform so we don't need this manual initialization next thing that we will need to do here is actually we will need to change the initialization of ionic platform because again it will be part of uh, work light i mean the cordova plugins and everything so this code is just needed for now uh, we can comment that out uh, for now so the next thing that we will need to do, and this is related to how the Ionic uh, together with uh, their CSS stylings work, we will need to change the CSS file. And in our case, as you remember, we are loading the Ionic CSS, which is like CSS style CSS. Uh, we will need to add the following. We will need to specify that our body position will be absolute. And that's all. Basically, it is related to the way how it works with CSS. So, uh, basically, we didn't do a lot here. We just added initialization of scripts related to mobile first platform. Uh, we also added the um, stylings and we removed the Cordova stuff there. So what we can do now, now we can go back to our command line interface and uh, try again MFP build and deploy. So the app is deployed. Let's go back to our home and try to reload the common uh, part that we have here. And you're now seeing our app. So this is already working. Our app is here. Uh, well, actually, this is this is the good news because uh, this is the, the first part that we will, were needed to do, just move the app uh, inside the mobile first platform. And basically on this step uh, we will finish our first lab, so uh, lab number 2-1 is finished, so thank you.